Hello everybody and welcome to Vaidya's Chess Hub. I hope you all are doing well and you are working on your chess. So in today's lecture we will continue our discussion of the checkmate patterns. So we have covered about 20 patterns by now and still there are 16 more patterns remaining. Some of them are based on the opening traps so that will take less time but some of them are quite important patterns that are yet to be covered and in today's lecture we will cover these four patterns that are mentioned on the screen. They will be Lawn Mower Mate, Legal's Mate, Lolly's Mate and Max Lung's Mate. So I will just give a brief introduction about each of the topic and obviously the format is going to be the same. I will have some test positions uh, for each pattern. There will be two demonstration positions and I will analyze one game based on that uh, checkmate pattern. So talking about the Lawn Mower Mate, it is the checkmate pattern where that involves the use of heavy pieces. So uh, before uh, going into the details of it, the, this checkmate pattern is basically based on the fact that rooks enjoy open files and uh, you must know the rook uh, role te checkmate technique where uh, you have to checkmate a single king with help of the two rooks and that is in the end game but if that happens in the middle game then we can call it a lawn mower mate. So basically the target is to open up the G and H files or A and B files depending where the king is and then uh, when the rooks or the queens are checking along these two files and they are if they are open files then uh, that leads to checkmate we will get to it once we look at that pattern in detail second is going to be the legal's mate uh, a very famous one I think you must have seen it before as well it is uh, uh, named after a player uh, that happened in his game first uh, named legal and later on i will show some uh, versions of it as well like these patterns like legals made the scholars made the pools made you already know about them but i have some examples where they are in kind of a different version so i think that will be also uh, educational for you the third one is going to be lolly's made uh, also a famous uh, composer i think uh, lolly and uh, there are a lot of end game and um, studies uh, that are being composed by the lolly and we'll see what is uh, lolly's mate and the fourth one is max lang's mate we are going to see a beautiful game by max lang where he managed to defeat uh, adolf anderson so that uh, that is a great game so let us start with the first pattern that is the lawn mower mate so this is an introduction position that uh, we can have a look at now in this position it is white to move and win and once again uh, in order to get achieve the checkmate pattern that we want to get we are often using some tactics so here the tactic will be mostly clearance you have heard of this thing so we want to clear the h file uh, we have already seen it in h file mate how we open up the h file and here uh, instead of going for slow attacking moves we have an immediate solution uh, checkmate in uh, almost three to four moves that you can spot it starts with the move queen takes h7 check now see rooks enjoy open files right so one rook already has open file we have to get another open file for this rook and what we do we sacrifice the queen in order to open up the h file and uh, as there's a, a very well known saying in chess uh, what is what left the board it does not matter what is there present on the board matters so even if we are losing a queen it does not matter if we are going to checkmate the black king and that's what we are going to do here we bring the rook h2 check and then now there is no defense since the g file is being controlled by this rook and now h file will be controlled by this rook and he can try bishop h3 but of course we are going to take with this another rook this is a common technique that you must know from the uh, elementary checkmate where we checkmate the king with two rooks that the the rooks should be usually placed on different files or ranks so rook takes h3 is of course the way to continue since we have sacrificed the queen we have to checkmate the black king otherwise the game uh, we, we might lose the game as well so we had to checkmate and now this was the basic concept of long more mate so we just clear up the black uh, shelter, the, we destroy the black shelter, uh, the pawn chain in front of the black king and in order to give open files for our rooks. Now uh, this is a basic statement that uh, you must know that this rook, this we call it as an open file. If there is a single pawn, we call it uh, a semi-open file and if it is completely blocked in, then we call it a closed file. So uh, this is an open file for the rook on the g file. We have to create another open file for the rook on the to, 
for the root to come to the h2 with the open file and after queen takes h7 uh, we have both the open files and the king is just where we need it so that's the basic pattern of lawn mode mate now we will see some complicated examples of course because it is for uh, uh, i guess about 1400 students so this is not going to be just about it so now let us move on to the next example Okay, so now this is a game of Gary Kasparov playing with the white pieces, but it was in a simultaneous exhibition. Uh, Gary Kasparov was playing with white pieces and we will jump to this position. Now this we are looking from Black's perspective. Uh, okay, I will flip the board. Now one thing I want to tell you all about the uh, checkmate patterns and about the uh, sys. When we are talking about checkmate patterns, we are also discussing about attacking ideas, right? So one of the ways that uh, you might win against a very good player or a higher rated player than you is by attacking. I, I think this has worked for me quite well uh, till now that whenever you try to attack somebody, it is usually difficult to defend. So if your attacking skills are good, that guarantees you that you will reach up to a certain level. And when you polish your defensive skills as well, then you become even good player. So uh, I think what in my case, I can clearly say that uh, whatever level I have achieved till now is mainly because of uh, attacking play. Also, there is a bit of a positional play, of course, but mainly because of attacking play. And usually it is hard to defend. And since it was a simultaneous game, uh, you can see the even though the white player is Gary Kasparov, uh, his opponent was not scared of him and he went for attack here and in this position actually black has a winning position and black found a very powerful move here uh, you can pause the video and think what it, what it could be there there are only four puzzles for which you are going to type the answers but still i will be asking you some questions uh, where you might as well want to pause and try to have a thing because that will improve your skills and uh, definitely recommend it to do so. But since I have to cover the answers of most of these uh, things as well, I, I will just go forward. So if you want to solve, you can pause and solve. So black played a very powerful move here, queen to h5. Now the idea must be clear that this queen on f3 is unprotected. And now we have a, a nasty discovered attack that is being threatened, which is rook to g1 check and that will win us the queen. So, and, and if you see, black has wonderful rooks here on the open file, uh, on the G file. So there's a uh, tremendous potential there. Whenever there is an open file, we want to uh, get to the second rank. So rook G2 can be threat in some positions after, uh, depending on where the queen moves. And if the queen moves at some unfortunate position, then we might as well have a checkmate. So it's either two ways, either we get a big positional advantage or we get a checkmate. So it depends on the quality of defense that white puts up. Actually, after uh, queen h5, uh, Gary Kasparov played queen e3, attacking the pawn on e5. And after f4, he just resigned the game. Uh, Gary Kasparov is a kind of a player, you know, he uh, he's usually on the attacking side. So if he has to defend, now here there is no uh, proper defense that even white can set up. So it is logical to resign in this position. But he is the one usually who uh, just decides to uh, call it a day and resign the game instead of continuing some uh, lost position. And in this position, he indeed resigned. Now, let's see why did he resign. Now, it is very often important for us to uh, check why the strong players resign at a uh, position. Because, you know, uh, as you all know, winning a one game is uh, the most difficult thing in chess, as I think Vladimir Kramnik has said it. So uh, the strong players, they re realize that uh, how they are going to lose, but maybe for us, it makes sense to continue. So let us see where the white queen can go. So let's say if it goes to d2, well, then we have a checkmate using the concept of lawnmower mate. So I think this must be uh, easy for you now. You must have got the answer. Queen takes h2 check, king takes h2, rook h4. Again, the two rooks on two open files and the king is checkmated on the h5. So uh, after f4, queen d2 is clearly not the choice. Uh, if, if you play queen d3, then don't just rush by taking this pawn. That will not lead to checkmate. Since after queen h2, king h2, rook h4, queen h3 is going to be there. And the checkmate will not happen. And as I have told you, since we are sacrificing the queen, we have to make sure that we are checkmating the king. Otherwise, 
it's uh, I, I will call it that it is almost impossible that you have sacrificed the queen and there is some slow compensation that is going to lead you to victory no it has to be a checkmate otherwise don't sacrifice the queen and that's what we do we don't sacrifice the queen but we just play the quiet move rook h4 and next move rook takes h2 is going to be a threat and it is uh, almost impossible to defend this the only move uh, is obviously very bad move queen g3 otherwise it's not possible because even after h3 we are just going to take it and it's still the same long more made after queen h3 queen h3 so in order to defend white has to play queen g3 and now of course taking the queen will win but if you want to calculate a force checkmate that is up to you so rook takes h2 is uh, even better sometimes i tend to choose a simpler solution in my games as well i would have just taken a queen but uh, if you are someone who like to calculate some lines then rook takes h2 is for you it will lead to checkmate since after queen takes h2 there is queen f3 check uh, the g file is controlled so queen g2 is only move and queen take g2 a forcing checkmate so this was the game of uh, gary kasparo uh, who lost this game in a, it was a simultaneous game and that's why he must have been playing a lot of boards so it is possible to lose uh, so this was it uh, gary resigned after this move f4 there was uh, no logical way to continue uh, so let us go to the next example that i have for you now i will like to jump to this position uh, okay this is a game of simon williams and we are having a look at it from the white's perspective and now uh, you can see if we look at the material white is an exchange up here black has this pawn on f4 which is uh, not really something that white should be worried of and his king is relatively safe with his uh, major pieces this bishop on e7 is not that good piece so white is definitely better here so uh, simon played the move rook bg1 doubling on the g file you already know that it uh, exerts a lot of pressure here and in some positions rook g7 will be threat uh, where black will have to sacrifice the queen and with this pawn on f5 and which in general with this bad bishop white will have a winning position so something like rook g7 can be a threat in this position but in the game black played the move f3 and now you can again pause the video and have a think how would you win here from white side so since uh, there was one more threat that black well to realize is that in this position of course rook g7 is still winning for white uh, black would have to sacrifice the queen but there is something better that black missed and which is the queen sacrifice queen takes h7 again that was one of the ideas of bringing the rook to the g1 so that the one of the rook will stay on the g file and other one can go to h5 and that's it that's the checkmate so after queen king takes h7 rook h7 rook h2 check uh, bishop uh, h4 rook takes h4 we have a checkmate here so after queen takes h7 this classic move uh, of the lone more mate uh, black just resigned here since uh, he's faced with this checkmate which is uh, inevitable okay now, so uh, we have seen two examples of uh, this particular checkmate pattern now i, I would like to uh, go to the next example which is a game that we are going to see now it's a very good game uh, played in the Nairo of Sicilian. Uh, we are going to have a look at it from White's perspective. So White started with the move e4, c5, knight f3, d6. You already know what is Sicilian Nairo of. So d4, uh, this is the open variation, open Sicilian we call it usually. And cd4, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, a6. This is the Nairo of variation, bishop g5. Arguably the sharpest option that is there in this position. There are also moves like English attack with bishop e3 and f3, queen d2 and so on. There is also uh, the Fisher attack with bishop c4. There is also g3, h3, f3, you name it. All the possible moves are there in this position. Even rook g1 is a move that is played here. So bishop g5 is the sharpest one. e6 is here main line and that can lead to... Uh, the poison pawn variation sometimes with queen b6 but in the game black decided to choose this uh, bit of a sideline knight bd7 i think it's also fine uh, bishop c4 was played this bishop is usually great on this diagonal sometimes you never know the sacrifice can come on e6 if black uh, pushes the pawn to e6 
so this is a typical idea in uh, Fisher attack of the knight orf. So h6 was played, bishop h4 and g6. And now black decides to piang to his uh, bishop on this diagonal. So he's playing a kind of a mix of Nidorf as well as the dragon. It is also uh, well known as the Dragondorf variation. This is not exactly the Dragondorf, but it is very similar to it. Dragondorf is when uh, the Sicilian dragon and uh, Sicilian Nidorfs, they are merged together. So both the ideas are combined. So queen e2 is played, uh, intending to castle long, of course, uh, white wants to castle long since uh, he wants to push his pawns on the king side where the black king is going to be most likely. So queen e2 is played, bishop g7, f4, queen a5, also uh, since black has realized that white is going to castle uh, queen side, it makes sense to put his queen on a5, also sometimes preparing b5, knight c5, this kind of advances. So long castle short castle and white does not wait here uh, for a, for a move he just goes g4 now the idea is uh, quite uh, clear that white is going to put his one of the rook on the g file and he will try to push g5 f5 and try to open up the king and this bishop is of course going to support us in this attack so black played the move knight c5 he has to create something on the queen side sometimes the idea is to play knight a4 to uh, put pressure on this c3 uh, square along with the bishop and in general, it's a useful move. White played the move rook h to g1. As I said already, the idea can be to push uh, g5 and f5 later on in order to completely break open the a, uh, g and h5. So black played b5. That's what uh, we usually play in Sicilian uh, to get the counter on the queen side. Black is going to attack on the queen's queen side and white is going to attack on the king side, the typical opposite side castling position. But here white found a very nice finesse that is that is there in the position. Usually the, this bishop is either on d7 in dragons or it is on b7 in most of the knight orf. So in this case, this c6 square is a bit of a weakness and white found a nice intermediate move, uh, knight to c6, attacking the queen. So uh, black naturally dropped back the queen to c7. We already know this is a natural square in Sicilian time. Anu. But now white played some very nice moves to uh, keep the advantage. Uh, if you can see that if white manages to put this bishop on this diagonal, then that's a quite an achievement for him. And currently the black moves, uh, they are threatening this bishop continuously. So if we go to b3, uh, the knight might uh, take the bishop and we might lose this important attacking piece. So white found another nice move here to uh, keep the advantage which is knight to d5. This is uh, really a nice tactic attacking the queen and using a little tactic that queen takes c6 uh, obviously runs into a fork knight takes e7 check and uh, we win a queen here. So knight d5 is a quite a nice move that shows the domination in the position that white has here in the center and also uh, note that this pawn is attacked twice. So it's not only about uh, cheap tricks in the position, we have also gained some positional uh, advantage also with this move knight d5. And knight on d5 is usually a great piece in all the Sicilians. It also sometimes uh, threatens uh, on f6, so black can't really play e6. So in general, it's knight d5 is quite a nice move. So black had to take this knight and then bishop takes d5. And now if you see, we have managed to keep this bishop on this diagonal. And also we are attacking this e7 pawn twice. So uh, black has to do something, uh, something like rook e8 doesn't work here because of knight takes e7 check, rook takes e7, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7 and suddenly you will realize that this rook is hanging and we can just capture it. So white will have a winning position in this case. So uh, going back to the game after knight d5, knight take d5, bishop take d5. Now you can see the quality of white pieces. This knight is tremendous on c6, this bishop is al always good. It, uh, uh, creates a weakness on this g6 square as well. So in the game knight a4 was played uh, attacking the pawn on b2 here with the bishop as well as the knight. So white played this move e5. Now it's more about blocking the squares and uh, creating your own play. The material matters very less in such positions. So e5 is a typical move that white anyway wanted to play in this position uh, just to uh, get this solid pawn chain and just to block out this bishop that is there on g7. So black played bishop b7, he is hoping to exchange some pieces here, uh, he is obviously threatening to win a piece at this moment but he is of course hoping to exchange some pieces as well if white defends it. So uh, 
White played knight takes e7 check since that pawn was for free. King h8. And now again a very nice move. Bishop to f6. Making sure that black does not get any play in this position. After uh, bishop takes f6, uh, he would have just played e takes f6. And now you can, we are going to see why this pawn on f6 is quite an important attacking uh, asset in many of the positions. Uh, white can sometimes aim for just f5, queen e3, and this h6 pawn will come under fire. And this pawn on f6, uh, see, we have been told that pawn is worth one point. But if it gets to f6, I will say that it is worth uh, three or four points, definitely, because it works as a piece when it's on f6, as we will see in the lollies mate. So in the game, after bishop to f6, uh, black decided to take on e5. Bishop take d5, knight take d5 is also not a good news for black since uh, this knight is again tremendous on d5. And we have this idea of f5 and that is just going to be too much for black to handle. So uh, in the game, d takes e5 was played, f takes e5, natural move, rook a to e8 and now queen e3. So white is slowly moving his forces ahead. Now queen takes h6 is obviously a threat using this pin along this diagonal. So there is no time to take this uh, knight because it will run into force checkmate with uh, queen takes h6. And now after queen e3, uh, it is difficult for black to find a move. Um, something like g5 uh, I thought can be a possibility. But then white plays queen h3 again shifting the attack. From the other side now we are attacking on this square again so king h7 and now knight f5 and now you can just see the domination of the white pieces and the quality of white pieces here that is there so after bishop takes f6 it's just a force mate and there is really no defense in this point this knight on f5 is just a tremendous attacking piece black can never drive it away and we are actually close to checkmating the black king here so uh, yeah it's over for black after bishop takes f6 queen takes h6 check king g8 there is actually a force checkmate that you again uh, can pause and calculate how would you uh, get a force checkmate and the lolly's mate that we are going to talk about is something with e takes f6 so with this pawn on f6 and queen on h6 when we checkmate the king with queen g7 that is the lolly's mate so this is also checkmate but uh, yeah, there is even forcing way and forcing way is always a good option. So the forcing way is queen g6 check, king h8 only move, queen takes f6 check. So with two checks, we first pick up this bishop and then it's a fourth checkmate with queen g7. So in this case, this uh, bishop was defending the g7 square. So with two checks, we first picked it up and then we checkmated the king with queen g7. But this also leads to checkmate, of course. This is also unstoppable. Uh, black will have to continue like this and... But still, we uh, know that uh, from human perspective, it's just over. You just can't stop the mate on g7. So both moves will lead to win, a victory for white. So queen e3 was a nice move. Black played king h7. And now white just decided that uh, his rook is ready to uh, come into the game. And this important defender needs to be removed. So just bishop takes g7, king takes g7. And now a very powerful move. I would actually advise you to pause here and have a think how would you continue attack i think it's quite a natural move uh, it should come to you naturally but still it's a, a spectacular move again uh, this you don't have to type in a uh, chat this is just for your practice so knight f5 check is the move that leads to win of course uh, queen takes h6 would be a checkmate so after king h7 something like this would lead to checkmate so knight f5 there is no uh, other move as well. After king g8, we are obviously going to take on h6. And now we are threatening queen g7 checkmate. And this is also not a good news for... Uh, again, a kind of a same version of lawnmower mate here uh, that we have. So in the game, after knight f5 check, uh, black took this knight on f5. But now g takes f5. And in the game, he played king h7. Uh, king h8 would lead to the same checkmate pattern, by the way, uh, with lawnmower mate. But actually, king h7 also does not stop it. White played the beautiful move, queen takes h6 check here. Now this is uh, a checkmate since after king takes h6, white just played rook d3. And now uh, earlier I said that it has to be immediate. Although it looks like that this is not an immediately checkmate, it is very hard for black to prevent this move rook to h3. You can try uh, whatever defense you want to try from black side, but this rook to h3 is going to be the ultimate threat. And again, what is present on the board that matters. 
so these two rooks are the only things that we need in this position and this uh, king is completely open here so even though black has a huge material advantage here it is uh, really uh, not the matter in the position so rook to h3 is just unstoppable checkmate threat and uh, it is impossible to defend it hence a black resigned after this beautiful move rook d3 you can again try sacrificing few of your pieces but uh, they will not lead anywhere um, now white black will just run out of material after rook c3 maybe is a desperate attempt to prevent the rook going from to h3 we can just take it and after knight c3 we can just even go king a1 not bothering about any of the pieces and rook h3 is just uh, going to be a checkmate so this was a, a classic demonstration of i think how to attack the sicilian knight or uh, a very good game so i have a puzzle for you now in the lawnmower mate let us jump to the puzzle so this is a classic game of victor bologan and i really like this example so i will jump to this position now in this position white played f takes g6 f takes g6 and now this is the homework for uh, all of you you can type the answer of this one in the in the comment section and uh, yeah if you could put all the answers together that uh, that that would be great i would just uh, select the best answer i will uh, reply to that answer not the best answer you all will get the uh, good moves i am sure about that uh, as you are getting always but i uh, i will just uh, uh, reply to one of you uh, for the correct answer and you can uh, refer to that comment to check if your answer was uh, correct or not and it would be uh, easy for me if you put all the answers in just the single comment okay it is right to play and win now this one uh, i'm slightly uh, changing on my policy here now this one is a little tricky the next ones might be easy but this is a little tricky but i have watched you solving the puzzles on uh, on your regular sessions by amazer so compared to that i think this is easier you have solved quite a difficult ones as i have uh, sometimes checked on the stream so yeah it is white to play and win okay so that was about the lawn mower mate now let us jump on to the legals mate now i think most of you will be familiar with this game that was played by legal uh, i will go to that game now so this was the game that was played by a uh, legal in the in paris in 1750 by the way so it's quite an old game so uh, legal played the move e4 e5 knight f3 d6 you all know the name of this opening uh, the popular philidor defense this sometimes played so bishop to c4 nowadays d4 is usually the main treatment of this position bishop to c4 also exist bishop g4 again a typical mistake in many of the games that we have seen this bishop generally does not belong here so why just continue developing and now g6 and now this is the classic example that i am sure many of you have seen that uh, this this we, this is what we call a relative pin so when there is a relative pin a pinned piece can move it is uh, legal to move that piece but sometimes it leads to material losses but sometimes it also leads to checkmate and this is one of the cases where moving this pin piece and losing a queen is in fact a good move and uh, legal ended played in this move in this position knight takes e5 sacrificing his queen but after that we get a bishop takes f7 king e7 and knight d5 checkmate uh, this is a famous legal smith um, i'm sure you have seen it but if you haven't seen it now this is uh, something new for you that after g6 in this position was a big mistake and white played this knight takes e5 and now actually we are uh, threatening this checkmate so uh, maybe black had to play bishop e6 but since uh, as an amateur player you might realize that oh i am winning a queen so bishop takes d1 might be a natural move but bishop takes f7 king e7 and knight d5 does lead to checkmate and this is the legal smith so i have a few games uh, on this uh, exact topic so let us try to go through those games they are obviously a short game since legal smith is a opening trap also known as a uh it's not only legal smith but legal strap so 
it's an opening trap so we would uh, go through some of the games so e4 e5 and the king's gambit now this is the one of the game of the greco so king's gambit accepted we have in this case we are going to see this game from white's perspective knight to f3 was played uh, sometimes uh, uh, we want to stop this queen h4 although there are some lines where the king also goes to f1 and we just allow queen h4 check but in this game knight f3 was played uh, h6 uh, generally to uh, respond to this king's gambit uh, I think d5 is a good move here I like the move d5 also in this case uh, there's a move g5 that I really like these two moves are I think uh, the best moves h6 uh, I don't recall h6 uh, ever like uh, in all the e4 e5 systems you know if you are playing a move like h6 or a6 then you are uh, lacking a plan, I can call it. Although h6 might be one of the main moves, uh, but not really the best. d5, g5, I like them the best. So bishop to c4, uh, white is just going to castle and try to attack on the f file. That's going to be his idea. So g5 was played finally. And now in this position, white played the move h4. Again, immediately challenging the rook on the h file. So uh, the exchange is, is basically threatened. h takes g5 is a threat in this position. So black decided to play this move f6, which is very ugly. In any e4, e5, if you are ever going to play f6, you have to think twice before playing it. And now actually in the game, knight takes g5 was played. But in fact, knight e5 is the powerful move in this position. Now, whenever you weaken this diagonal, there is going to be this discovery with uh, some threats. So this is not exactly like a legal smith, but a very similar version. In the game, actually, knight takes g5 was played, and after h takes g5, I am actually not sure why how white was going to continue his attack. Now this time we are uh, seeing the game that is even older than this. Now this is from 1620, as the record I have here, the, the games of Greco, if you remember. Maybe they are uh, created games, or maybe there was a player. I am not sure about the history, but 1620 is the year. So uh, yeah, we can expect a mistake of this uh, this type from the players of that old generation. But knight takes g5, h takes g5 was indeed the best move. But in the game, f takes g5 was played. Black did not notice this threat that the queen can come to h5, and that's why h takes g5 is clearly the best move. But after f takes g5, we have a fourth checkmate. Queen h5 check. It's a mate in four moves. King e7, queen f7 check, king d6, queen d5 check king e7 and queen e5 and that is a checkmate again very similar to legal smith not exactly similar but this discovery idea that we have that with the move knight takes g5 is quite common and that's the reason actually after f6 knight e5 actually uh, does the same purpose so we are again uh, sacrificing our knight but after f takes e5 now the position is same nothing has changed it's still mate in 4 with queen h5 and the same way as the first one so knight e5 was the precise way to uh, go about that attack, not knight takes g5 as happened in the game. Yeah, so this was another example of the Greco's mate, a typical, uh, not Greco's mate, sorry. Uh, the game was played by Greco, but of the legal's mate. Now, uh, now this is a game of uh, Blackburn, again, from 1885. You must know this name. We have already learned what is Blackburn's mate. So this is a game of Blackburn, again a very short game, just uh, 13 moves. So white played e4, e5 and Blackburn is playing from white side. So f4 again, King's Gambit, now d6. I think this is known as the Fisher's defense. Uh, I think it's a passive way to uh, treat this position. The best way is obviously to take this pawn or to go for this d5, which I also like. I think these two are the critical moves in, for black in the position. Uh, this d6 is a uh, little passive because anyways white gets uh, what he wants. He just brings his knight out, then brings his bishop out, then castles. Quite a natural development. And this e5 come can uh, if I pawn can come under some pressure. So in the game knight f6 was played, knight c3. White is continuing the development. h3 was played, bishop h5, g4. Now this is a risky move, but. King's Gambit is for the players who like to take risks, so of course g4 is natural for them, we can call it like this. Knight takes g4 was played, black was also in the mood of uh, going for the attack, so h takes g4, bishop takes g4. Very common idea in many of the Rai Lopez or Italian games to sacrifice the knight in order to get the pin. 
but in this position white played this move f takes e5 and again black did this elementary mistake of capturing this pawn with the knight again hoping that he is attacking this pinned piece couple of times so he might win it but he of course overlooked a beautiful move from white again you can pause the video and have a thing but since it's a legal trap i think you will just get it automatically that knight takes e5 is indeed the solution here bishop takes d1 and same as the legal smith bishop takes f7 king e7 and knight d5 and this is a beautiful checkmate again because of this uh, two knights and the bishop dominating the king so this was also known as the blackburn trap as uh, this happened in one of the game it's very similar to the legal uh, mate almost exact uh, the same thing i can say uh, but this was played in 1885 in the simultaneous exhibition that was played by blackburn so uh, i think this trap is clear to you you just have to remember one thing that whenever there is a relative pin the pinned piece can sometimes move with great effect basically that's the uh, take away from this uh, legal smite and now i have got a puzzle for you in this one as well so let me jump to the puzzle yeah i'll just quickly go through the moves and i will stop at a critical moment so e4 e5 four knights uh, game it was after knight f6 castle d6 knight d5 bishop g4 c3 bishop c5 d3 and in this position black played the move knight e7 and now this is really interesting one uh, it is white to move here what do you think is the move that gives you the advantage in this position it might not lead to checkmate but i am Uh, asking you to find advantage for white in this position what maneuver or what do you think white should play here it's quite a nice one i really like it i actually would have liked to show this to you but uh, since we have to have a puzzle and you should work out some things uh, this one i'm leaving up to you to figure out but this is again going to be a difficult one i think because there are some lines uh, to calculate here so yeah white to play and this will be uh, your second puzzle for this session white to play and win and the answer you will write in comment along with the answer for the first one what you can do you can just uh, pause the video try to find the solution and then write it somewhere and then all the things that you have written you can just type it in one comment Okay and now we are moving ahead to the next pattern that is the lolly's mate so let me get that on the board okay so this position is uh, really the basic one in the lolly's mate now again i will uh, give you an opportunity to think and find the mate which is quite natural uh, white to play and win a typical maneuver Now in the lolly's mate, what you will basically see is, uh, as I have sh uh, shown you earlier, that this pawn on f6 is not worth one point. It can become worth three or even more points when it stands on f6 beautifully. There is no no one challenging that pawn. Then it actually works as a piece. And uh, this is uh, one of those positions where white can win with a, a simple maneuver. Queen g5, threatening a checkmate on g7 square. now the only way to get out of this checkmate is to play the move g6 and now queen h6 and this is the basic construction in the lolly's mate where we have the pawn on f6 the queen on h6 and we are threatening the mate on g7 and when the black king is boxed in uh, like this because of his own rook he should have some piece that can come to f8 to defend this type of checkmate uh, usually so this is a typical maneuver that you will see quite often in many kings indian attacks and uh, such openings where white will have this queen g5 and then queen h6 and then it will be a checkmate with the help of a pawn on f6 you will checkmate the king like this now this was the basic example let us move on to some uh, advanced level examples okay just a minute okay so Yeah, so this was a game of again uh, Blackburn playing with the white pieces, and uh, it is also from the Simul in 1871. Now you can see already that he has a wonderful pawn chain here. His pieces are quite beautiful here from the white side, and obviously he is looking for some breakthrough. 
but it is quite impressive what the move that he played here involved a cal some calculation and he played this fantastic move bishop to c1 again uh, in important principle of attack is that you should have your all the pieces in the attack and if you see this bishop on a3 was doing nothing here actually he just uh, biting this granite as uh, there's a term in chess he just uh, uh, attacking this pawn on c5 which is uh, protected sufficiently so bishop to c1 and now he had seen that this bishop actually will be useful on this diagonal quite a, a nice calculation uh, done by Blackburn in this position and now we will see uh, how that comes into use. Uh, so d4 was played by Black trying to activate his uh, pawn chains, he is trying to create a passer uh, on the d5. White played this move rook e4 and now after bishop to d5 he played rook e to h4. And now he had seen a beautiful uh, thing here, after rook takes e5 it is white to play and win. So you might see, uh, you might feel that after rook takes h7 is of course the move that was played. Uh, queen takes h7, the rook takes h7. After king takes h7, how are we going to checkmate the uh, black king? Because after queen h4, maybe he has rook h5, and uh, there cannot, be, there might not be any mate, or even king g8. And after queen h6, black might start his own uh, play here. In fact, it might as well be checkmate after something like rook e2, I think and then rook g2 and you you clearly don't want to uh, uh, play something like this so that's the thing when uh, i realized that this bishop on c1 is actually now coming into uh, the black's help the white's help and after king takes h7 the h6 square is available to white thanks to this bishop on c1 that is there if it was on a3 then this all the combination wouldn't have worked and now in this case it actually works so from the concept of h file mate, we already know how king g8 loses. It loses to rook h8 check, king h8, queen h6 and again we have the lollies mate with queen g7. And uh, if he doesn't take it, uh, if he it takes it's very important that we have queen h6 check. Bringing the queen into the game with the support of the bishop and we have the checkmate. See we need only two pieces to checkmate the king. The rest of them we can sacrifice to create a condition that will work best for us. So uh, this was the game of black one, I think a classic example of a uh, checkmate, of the lollies mate. Now let us go to the next uh, example. Okay, now we are going to uh, look at a game that was played by uh, Robert James Fisher, Bobby Fisher, commonly uh, known in chess world, uh, former world champion, one of the greatest of all times. Uh, now this is a classic game in one of my favorite openings. I I also play usually this opening, which is the King's Indian. Uh, from both sides, I like to play from white as well as black. And you will get this uh, lollies mate pattern quite often in King's Indian. So this is one of the classic King's Indian attacks by uh, Robert James Fisher. He was he's playing from the white side and against uh, the French defense. So you can play this setup of King's Indian attack, which uh, I think you must have seen uh, in my games as well that I have played uh, on leeches or in tournaments. That I often play this uh, setup. I of course have seen a lot of games uh, by Bobby Fisher and others in this opening. So this is the King's Indian attack. Uh, the reason it is called as King's Indian attack is that white is basically playing the normal opening king's indian defense that is usually called so king's indian defense you already know is something like this c4 g6 knight c3 bishop g7 e4 d6 and this is the king's indian where black castle shot and if white does that from white side then it, we call it an attack so against the french defense you can play that e4 d e6 d3 d5 knight d2 important to protect this pawn knight f3 g3 and it's basically a setup white will white's first move will be same regardless and the plan that he has usually is to push this e5 then play the move h4 rook e1 knight comes via h2 to uh, f1 to h2 to g4 the queen quite often comes to h5 and we just try to attack the king of course it requires a lot of calculation to uh, execute the attack but still you get a quite a good attacking chances so e5 again typical move knight d7 rook e1 uh, b5 now what black usually tries to do is that he tries to push his pawns on the queen side 
uh, like b4 and c4 as white does in uh, king's indian defense if you know from the white side black is generally trying to do the same knight f1 b4 h4 now now the ideas are pretty clear what i have just explained white is going to just do that so it's important to protect this pawn on e5 so that our knight can come into action so bishop f4 was played uh, a4 and now it's a common knowledge that against this pawns on b4 and a4 uh, black generally wants to play a3 in this position to uh, weaken the white construction so white generally plays a3 in such positions and these exchanges are uh, fine for white he has to play a3 in this position this is a bit of a positional uh, positional concept in our checkmate patterns but it's quite important that you play a3 here because if you go for some natural move then black might play a3 and then this pawn is uh, of a nuisance and white's pawn chain has been destroyed here and uh, after the exchanges knight might come into b4 and black will get some advantage on the queen side so uh, Fisher of course shows that understanding and plays a3, ba3, ba3, knight a5. Again, trying to prepare c4. White plays the moon knight e3, preventing uh, c4 for a bit. Bishop a6 again, trying to play c4. Bishop to h3. Now here the intentions are pretty clear that White has White is ignoring this play on the queen side and he's just going to create the play on the king side. So d4 was played, knight to f1 back because this knight generally belongs to the g4 square now the reason it uh, sometimes it doesn't go directly is because the h5 sometimes can block out the white attack and then black might set up the fortress like this and uh, fisher has a different idea clearly so let's see what was his idea uh, he wants to play the moon knight g5 so after knight g5 knight d5 was played bishop to d2 now the reason bishop to d2 is played because we don't want to allow this exchange that will damage our pawn structure so bishop d2 bishop take g5 bishop take g5 attacking the queen queen to d7 and queen h5 and now uh, again this knight wants to go here here and sometimes even it uh, jumps to f6 to sacrifice itself and in the game rook fc8 was played knight to d2 another reason uh, of course is that we want to come to e4 square and from there we can jump on to this uh, two beautiful squares that are available because of this pawn on e5 we call it an outpost so the knight's journey is uh, to the, one of those squares black played the moon knight c3 and in this position uh, fisher executed a wonderful attack so he started with a quite a spectacular move bishop to f6 now this shows understanding now you can see that the this part of the board is where all the action is focused for white for black it is on the queen side like on this part of the board but if you see that black has not created any damage on the queen side yet in order to uh, get to the uh, king basically get get to the second rank i can say instead of saying the king but black has not broken anything on the queen side yet and white is going for the break first with this move bishop f6 it's a fantastic move. If you observe the threat in the position, if uh, black is scared of taking this bishop, it's simply to go queen g5, queen h6, and then carry out the lolly's mate uh, that uh, we have seen. And if you allow a bishop to stay on f6, that is generally a painful thing because this knight also is uh, trying to jump to this f3 and g5 square. So uh, queen e8 was played in the game. Let's just see what happens if you take it. Then e takes f6 is a threat. Uh, it takes f6 we are going to play and after queen d6 we might even simply play knight f3 and now the threat could be simple like queen h6 and knight g5 and it this bishop this knight they are absolutely uh, of no use in this position since it will take a lot of time for them to king, come to king side i don't think they will even come in time to save the black king uh, white is just going to win here with this uh, attack uh, or you can also uh, force the issues with queen g5 check i think it's uh, the most cleaner solution knight f3 is also the slow attack will also work but there's a brute force that queen g5 check will win instantly so king h8 already we know lol is made with queen g7 so you can see how white got this pawn to f6 now it's not always that you will get this pawn for free you will have to sacrifice something in order to get that pawn to f6 and bishop f6 does that exactly so after takes takes and something like queen d6 trying to come to f8 square it's quite a natural move so uh, white in fact has a win with queen g5 check king f8 queen g7 check king e8 and rook takes e6 check a fantastic move and uh, it has to be taken of course because the queen is hanging and now a typical motif we just push the pawn and it becomes a queen 
So this is a typical motif when the second rank is open, we just push the pawn and it queens and uh, yeah, that's it basically. When with the two queens on the board, the black king is uh, definitely not going to survive in this position and white is winning here. So that's the danger in the position if you take this bishop. So queen e8 was played and now uh, queen g5, maybe uh, black can hold with some queen f8. That's why the queen e8 was played. But uh, he just brought this knight into the game. Now after knight takes e4, most likely the rook will appear on e4 and from there it can also come to g4. So it's a nice move that uh, will create square for your pieces. Black finally decided to play g6. Now uh, queen h6 will be met with queen f8 and you might not have any advantage there. So Fischer decided to wait a little bit, he played the move queen g5, finally knight e4, rook e4 was played, c4, again finally going for the queen side play, now he wants to take take and maybe bishop take d3 and try to open up the queen side, h5, Fischer is continuing his uh, attack on the king side, c takes d3, rook h4. Now uh, we have already, uh, no I don't think we have covered this pattern but with the bishop on f6 and rook on h8 there is a uh, uh, opera mate, uh, the game that we have definitely seen. Uh, so that's the pattern also to look for in this position. Rook a7 and in this position actually queen h6 will uh, lead uh, for advantage to white. You know after queen f8 is the only move to defend this checkmate threat and you can just play h takes g6, queen takes h6 and rook takes h6 and now. Uh, we are actually threatening to just take the pawn and make a queen and you can't take with the h pawn because rook h8 would be made you can't uh, take with the f pawn i mean uh, because of bishop takes e6 and again you can see that white clearly has the winning position here so this is this was actually good for white but fisher actually set up a little trap in this position he just played the quiet move bishop g2 and maybe it it uh, gave a black such a feeling that uh, okay fisher's attack has failed he's not going to checkmate me so he just played d takes c2 but now came the surprising queen h6 again going for same idea of the lollies mate with either the bishop or the pawn on f6 we are threatening queen g7 which would be a checkmate black played queen f8 and now came the fantastic move queen takes h7 check the queen sacrifice now you will see why did he play bishop g2 then now this is the point after king takes h7 h takes g6 check uh, king g8 is obviously made because of rook h8 and uh, a so-called opera mate um, but after king takes g6 we need this bishop e4 that's the final touch and uh, it's a checkmate so we needed a bishop on g2 that could come to e4 and check the king so that was the part of uh, fisher's idea when he played the quiet move bishop g2 and it almost looked like that uh, he's backing down here but in fact the bishop wanted to come to e4 and uh, deliver the final blow so uh, that was the checkmate uh, pattern that we had there from the Fisher scheme and uh, now I think it's the time for the puzzle. Let me see. By the way, I just wanted to show you one more position. Before that, um, I'm trying to find it. Okay, there is one more pattern that is quite uh, common along with the lollies mate that you all should know that is that white can play in this position uh, a move uh, queen to h6. Now this is a similar one to lollies mate but very useful queen h6 threatens mate on g7 and when our black defends with rook g8 you have this fantastic resource. Okay, you can pause the video and think how would you win here from white side. Yes, we have the queen sacrifice again, queen takes h7, king takes h7 and rook h4 is a checkmate thanks to this pawn on f6 against. Now you can see how important this pawn is, it's clearly not, not worth one point in this case. This is definitely more than that. Uh, so this was about it in uh, the lollies mate. Now let me jump to the puzzle that I have. Okay, this time the puzzle is easier I think than the first two. So this is uh, white to play and win. You can think, what will you do here from white side? Now the answer of this one you are going to type in uh, in the chat, in the comments that is. So white to play and win for the lollies mate. Okay, the last one, the last pattern for today is going to be the 
max lungs checkmate so what is a max lungs checkmate let me go to the position now this is a typical position that will demonstrate the idea in the max lungs checkmate now this is quite a common mating pattern uh, white to play and win here leads to checkmate now queen takes h7 the king runs so we play bishop takes h7 check oops sorry the, i have put the king into the check so okay bishop takes h7 check is uh, the starting move in this position and after king to h8 which is the only move we put our bishop on g6 now the reason is when we play queen h7 the f7 square has to be defended so uh, we play the move bishop to g6 that is a discovered check so black has to go to g8 and then queen h7 would be checkmate now remember this example quite uh, a regular example bishop take h7 and then bishop g6 and then queen h7 is going to be a checkmate and actually this was played in a classic game that we are going to look at right now uh, let me see what we have here that that was obviously the game that was played by uh, the great legal so now this pattern can also occur from uh, you know uh, okay let me try to adjust the screen i think it will take a while uh, yeah Just a second, I'm trying to find it. Find that board. Okay, I think I have it now on my screen. So, uh, in this position, uh, now you can see the construction is almost similar. We have the queen along this diagonal and the same um, uh, checkmate maneuver is executed here as well so we again play bishop g8 check king a8 and put our bishop on f7 this time if i flip the board uh, let's say uh, 90 degrees i think then i will get the same position that we had before so this also can happen again the idea is similar we want to cover this escape square so after king h7 queen g8 would be checkmate in the as we had seen in the previous case now this is another way uh, the uh, max lungs checkmate can uh, happen now let me go to the game basically that will show you this beautiful game now we are going to have a look at it from black's perspective so this was a great game played by max lung uh, against adolf anderson so max lung is playing with the black pieces and we have an e4 e5 uh, opening so after e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 a spanish game this knight d4 i think it's called as bird defense this was played and this is one of the treatments of uh, playing the bird defense bishop to c4 is played a knight f6 e5 d5 a typical uh, strike in the center bishop b3 bishop g4 f3 and knight e4 and now you can see that uh, black is already creating some imbalances in the position because of this pin this knight can't be taken and if you take the bishop then a regular tactic queen h4 check it might threaten um, uh, king f1, queen f2 will be checkmate and after g3 you are knight take g3 and you will win. A typical tactic so uh, actually in this position none of the black piece can be captured. So black white castled and black played this fantastic move d3. Now the reason I call it a fantastic move is that white has to find a good continuation. Probably a move like queen e1 was better because this move d3 opens up this diagonal as we know it's quite an important diagonal in Greco's mate. So black, uh, white in the game decided to capture this bishop. He was not aware of the threats that are going to be generated. So bishop c5 check, king h1 and from this point on I think this game is the spectacular one uh, that I have seen. Knight to g3 uh, check, a typical idea in the Greco's mate uh, we have already seen. h takes g3 and queen g5. So uh, from the Greco's mate we already know that this bishop is covering this square. So we are threatening queen h6 and that would be a checkmate. 
but this next move is i think even more special rook f5 attacks the queen so idea is queen h6 rook h5 will block out the attack so in this position black played a fantastic move i would actually give you a chance to find this move you can pause the video and have a think what will you play here from black side black played a fantastic move h5 sacrificing the queen so rook takes g5 would obviously lead to checkmate after h takes g4 and it's mate again thanks to this greco's mate construction a piece on the heavy file in the open file heavy piece on the open file and a bishop on the diagonal covering the square and it's uh, just a mate so this h5 was a very nice move just threatens a g4 and uh, checkmate um so g takes h5 was played and now don't rush uh, taking the h5 pawn you will lose a queen since after queen to h5 this is a kind of x-ray that will protect the queen so you are not winning a queen here um, so in the game queen takes f5 was played quietly recapturing and now threatening rook takes h5 so g4 is quite a natural move and now again he showed some brilliant tactical vision rook takes h5 check g takes h5 and queen e4 and now again threatening Greco's mate. So this is actually a great combination of Greco's mate as well as the Max Lang's mate. Since it was played by Max Lang, this uh, checkmate pattern has been given the name of uh, Max Lang. But yeah, again, Queen H4 checkmate is a threatened using the concept of Greco's mate. Queen F3 was played, and now you you have the construction that we have seen in the case two of the Max Lang's checkmate. Queen uh, H4 check first. Uh, bringing the queen to h3 an inferior square and now he jumps to the queen e1 check and now this is the construction that i had just shown you where bishop jumps like this and queen goes to g1 and it's a checkmate so king h2 bishop g1 and the next is pretty routine king h1 bishop f2 and king h2 and queen g1 and it would be checkmate i think this was a fantastic uh, fantastic game played by max Lang. and to beat a player like adolf anderson with such an attacking skill is quite impressive so uh, just going through the game uh, this move d3 that basically uh, white did not realize that this bishop on this line diagonal along with the threads along this uh, h file are just going to be too much for handle and this was really an attacking masterpiece i will say by max Lang. quite a beautiful game and black manages to finish the manage to finish the game in style uh, let me see if i have any uh, position left no that's it so this is the puzzle uh, in this position it is uh, white to play and win i think it's quite uh, an easy one there might be two solutions here i think but you can try to find the both but it's white to play and win it's not very easy but it, the lines are a little longer so yeah something to calculate okay so i think uh, that was it for uh, today's lecture we have covered all the four checkmate patterns um, i personally enjoyed going through all the games that that were really the i think the attacking masterpieces and i hope that these patterns are also useful for uh, your playing you are, you are definitely your level has improved that you have also gained uh, quite a few of you have gained the rating so yeah just keep practicing and uh, keep working on your chess uh, since uh, these are the times that you actually have i think more time than usual to work on your chest so yeah so see you bye bye and uh, now i will see you. we'll meet in the, the next uh, video and also i'm looking forward to join you guys in the hub so yeah take care bye bye